Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So Intel launched their 10th gen desktop processors about two weeks back and there's some talking to do about it. Let's start. So Intel launched their 10th gen desktop processors and their flagship processor, the i9-10900K, has been termed as the world's fastest gaming processor by Intel. Now, before we talk about this i9-10900K itself, let's just quickly see the various processors that they have this time around launched. So Intel this time around has covered up almost its entire family of processors, right from i9 to Celeron. So if we just quickly look here, i9 gets the flagship processor, which is the 10 core 20 thread processor. i7 gets 8 core 16 thread processor. i5 gets the 6 core 12 thread processor. Uh, i3 gets the 4 core 8 thread and uh, Pentium gets the 2 core 4 thread and Celeron gets 2 core processor uh, without the hyper threading. So I mean if you look here closely you would see that Intel has pretty much enabled hyper threading throughout its lineup just pairing Celeron and that kind of makes sense because I don't know how many people would actually go and buy a Celeron processor in 2020. Now uh, there are some uh, specific processors which I would like to talk about here in this video. So the first one is the i5-10600K which is a 6 core 12 thread processor and this processor actually really excites me because I really want to see how this, uh, how this processor would actually go and perform uh, against the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. So it would be really interesting to see how this processor would actually perform in real life scenario. The next processor here that I would like to mention is the i7-10700K which is a 8 core 16 thread processor. Now if you look closely here, I mean this processor is more or less a rebranded 9900K. I mean at least that's what I think because the base clock is more or less the same. The boost frequency is more or less the same. I mean TDP I'm not counting because uh, traditionally whatever TDP that Intel has mentioned it's never true in real life scenario so basically 9900k would uh, consume up to 250 watts if you have overclocked the processor to about 5 gigahertz and I do expect the same from 10700k as well now the next processor which I want to talk about is their actually flagship processor which is the i9 10900k so if you look here closely, the i9-10900K has this uh, uh, technology, the boost technology called the thermal velocity boost, which enables this processor to attain a turbo boost frequency of about 5.3 gigahertz. Now the interesting thing to note here is that the 5.3 gigahertz, which Intel is talking about, is basically achieved by one core or two core of this processor uh, I mean for a very short period of time till the CPU is running at 70 degrees centigrade. So if it uh, I mean exceeds 70 degrees then this uh, 5.3 gigahertz turbo boost speed would go down. And uh, what is uh, I mean like uh, I mean uh, pretty obvious from this is that this processor is actually going to run pretty hot. So if you plan to go and buy this processor I would seriously suggest you guys considering buying a very hefty cooler so i mean if you don't get a good cooler then this processor probably is not going to sustain those 5.3 gigahertz that you are looking at now if we specifically speak about the performance of this processor uh, intel claims that uh, during gaming uh, at 1080p you could see performance benefits of up to 18 to 20 percent that would depend upon the title that you are playing and uh, the interesting thing here is that they are actually comparing this performance to their uh, previous line of processor or their previous launches. So basically 10900K is being compared to 9900K and, and the same goes for the productivity work as well. So they are claiming that uh, in Adobe Premiere you could perhaps again get a performance boost of up to 18%. Uh, if you compare it to its predecessor. Now Intel also mentions here that uh, it, you can also get a performance gain of about 70% over a computer which was built about three years back. 
Now it's pretty interesting to see Intel mentioning this because I think they are somehow trying to attract people who bought their PCs about three years back and they are actually considering upgrading their current system. So I mean that's a smart move from Intel to show them that perhaps by buying i9 10900K they could get uh, I mean like performance benefits up to 70% so that's pretty interesting to see. Now I mean uh, having said so much about this processor I seriously think that even the i9 10900K looks like a rebranded 9900K but with two more cores and a high, slightly higher boost frequency and I think that if you talk about this processor i9 10900K you could easily overclock this processor to about 5.2 gigahertz across all cores provided you have this hefty cooler with you guys. Now <clears throat> the next thing which is uh, important to understand here is that if you go on and plan to buy this particular processor then you've got to go and buy a newer motherboard uh, which is the Z490 chipset. Now I mean I seriously don't understand why Intel would launch a newer platform uh, for this particular processor especially because they could have actually implemented this processor or made this processor compatible with the current Z390 or LG1151 socket and my reasons for saying this is that number one I mean this processor is still based out of 14 nanometer plus 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 manufacturing process so I mean I don't see this processor improving on performance by a huge margin there's nothing new in this number two this processor does not incorporate PCIe gen 4 yes guys you heard it right in 2020 Intel is launching a processor which doesn't support PCIe gen 4 although the chipset that they are like kind of trying to put this uh, processor on that supports PCIe Gen 4 but the processor itself doesn't support PCIe Gen 4 which is pretty disappointing to see and I mean I've heard rumors and uh, from various sources that if you want to go and overclock this processor you probably would have to buy their higher end motherboards which have a beefy VRM and uh, this kind of is pretty i mean this is pretty disappointing again because the z490 higher end motherboards start from anywhere at around 800 dollars and go to about 1200 dollars so i mean considering this processor would sell at about 500 dollars so 1200 plus 500 dollars or 800 dollars plus 500 dollars would bring your motherboard and cpu budget to about 1300 dollars and a lot of people these days are actually trying to save money so I don't know how many people would really be interested in buying this processor but my own opinion is this is like really ridiculous and the prices at which these motherboards are going to sell again it's pretty high so yeah I mean that could actually make a lot of people rethink about their decision of going and investing in a motherboard like this now why is it not good to invest on this processor or on 10th generation as of now there's another reason for it now because this processor doesn't support uh, PCI Gen 4 and there's nothing new on this processor you probably would have to wait next year when Intel would launch their 11th gen CPUs which should support PCI Gen 4 that's what I presume and if that was if that is what the case is then this motherboard probably would be good for only just one generation of processor or there would be just one gen uh, one generation or the 11th generation 11th generation of intel cpus that would actually take full advantage of the newer z490 chipset and i say this because there are news that in 2022 that's the year after Intel is going to launch uh, their Alder Lake CPUs which would be based out of LGA 1700 socket and then again there would be a new chipset or a motherboard that's gonna come out so again the motherboard that you buy today it probably might be a very good motherboard but again you're not going to take advantage of of the various features that that motherboard might have you're just restricted to certain basic features except for overclocking I don't think this motherboard would do any good and current Z390 motherboards there's so many motherboards let's uh, just to give you an example like 
the asus maximus 11 extreme it has some beefy vrm set this processor could could very well should have been you know kind of or could very well have been kind of made compatible to work with that series of uh, motherboard so that i mean they could have handled this processor very easily i mean there's nothing new in this processor it doesn't support pcie gen 4 there are not many pcie lanes uh it still comes with 40 so basically it's like 16 uh with the cpu and uh, 24 for the motherboard itself for the chipset it itself so uh it's 16 plus 24 so a total of uh, 40 pcie lanes that's how it's being mentioned there so i mean i think uh, i mean i seriously don't know what to say but then probably i9 10900k or 10700k is definitely not the processor that i'm really looking forward to i'm more looking uh, forward to i5 10600k which is a 6 core 12 thread processor and i really hope that this processor does well because we need some processor to compete against 3600x as of now i don't see any intel product which can actually stand up against the uh ryzen 5 3600x especially if it's a 6 core 12 thread processor so i really hope that this uh mid segment uh mid segment uh, processor from intel uh, could actually stand up against 3600x so i mean yeah guys there's nothing more to say about this launch so down in the comment section below do let me know what do you think about this launch are you the one who's going to buy this processor and the newer chipset and uh, yeah what do you think about the pricing so yep that's it guys uh, i mean nothing more to say yep so sajeev signing off until next time stay happy stay healthy stay blessed bye bye